Welcome. Bartner Electrical have been looking after the domestic and business customers for installation and maintenance for 53 years in Ipswich and surrounding areas. We as a company have seen many economic and natural situations, recessions, but we've never seen one like we are at present, where we are all in lockdown in our homes, with the exception of key workers, but their immediate families with their children are at home. The isolation of the older age groups of our family, missing our grandchildren. Working at home brings its hidden electrical safety issues along with others. And as we use an increased amount of IT equipment and your home and domestic appliances, I would just like to give you a talk and thoughts about your hidden dangers that you have in your home. Most homes have insufficient 13 amp switch sockets in their rooms to charge the IT equipment, to plug in, in your laptops, your printers, your scanners, your routers, and all the equipment that goes with it. So are the fuses in that equipment correctly rated? Is the lead in good condition? Can you see the cable cords? Is it frayed? Are the fuses correctly rated? Do you use extension leads? The real type, not the leads. Now the reels fully extended. If not, that can cause a fire. USB chargers that you charge your IT equipment. You take that out, do you unplug it and switch it off? Is it against fabric or covered by curtains? Another thought, we are socialized, we are social distancing. Your foosball also likes to do that. I doubt if it is. Under your cupboard in your stairs, wherever your board is, everything's chucked in that cupboard, door slammed tight. That is a fire hazard because there's no ventilation around that fuse board. So again, that's another thought. May not be an electrical item, but what about your dingler danglers on the window that could have rays coming through? The sun that comes in on your equipment, forming rays, that could cause a fire. Have you got RCD protection fitted? Have you done a risk assessment for surge protection? You may think you'll have extension leads that are surge protected, but they have no indication they have failed. Only, only proper fitted ones will give you that indication. Are your sockets or switches warm to the touch? Are there burn marks on the sockets? Do you have to wiggle leaves to get appliances to work? Then there's the garden, another hidden danger. Working in that shed, is that wild cracky where you just got extension leads in there? How is the pump pump connected and display lights, etc.? Are they just lights plug and play in the plastic bag? So please just check. Oh, now my next part is what are the responsibilities as a landlord for properties in England? This is very relevant as on July the 1st this year, the rules will be changing in England. This will introduce standards of electrical safety as well as legal requirements on the service on documents to relevant people. The electrical safety standards to the private rate that sector in England regulations place a continuous duty on the landlords in England to maintain their property to electrical safety standards and to have the evidence of this to prove it. This means your property must meet the 18th edition of the line regulations and you must have a report that shows this from a qualified person. You'll also need to comply and ensure that your fire protection smoke alarms comply to British standards 5839-6-9-2019. Also, any portable equipment that you supply are regularly inspected include washing machines, cookers, etc. You ask, who is a qualified person? Well, that is who is competent, qualified and trained to perform the inspections and is part pay registered. And that be your responsibility to ensure this for all maintenance work, installations, etc. Not your maintenance guy, the tenant, or any other trade, but a registered electrician. Ask for their regulatory company and their number and check it on the website. So, when do I need to have an inspection performed by? If you rent the property in England, any tenancy that you create or renew on or after July 2020. This will require electrical inspection and report on the condition of that property. Renewals in the case include statutory periodic tenancy that are created at the end of a fixed term on or after this date. 
For pre-existing tenancies, you would need to have a report done in full before April the 1st, 2021. If you have a lodge or longer tenancy, this could be up to seven years. My ECI has indicated a potential breach of an actual safety standard. These are highlighted on the observation page. So what do I do? It's your duty that the work that's been identified will need to be carried out by a qualified person, either performed that work or investigate further. And that is to be within 28 days. The time limit could be shorter, depends on that report. Once it's been done, you'll need to ensure a written report that a qualified person has carried out this as soon as possible. The report needs to be state that natural safety standards are now met and that the further we know the work has been carried out. By the electrical will go one step further. They issue a brand new EICR certificate stating that the 18th regulations of compliance have been met. And this work and this report and work must be confirmed to the tenants within 28 days. So who needs these reports? They need the tenants need a copy. You'll need to replace an existing EICR if you had it done prior to 2018. The tenant, the local authority, you need to provide for they request it. And any prospective tenants that request a copy in writing must be provided one in 28 days. So how often do I need to replace this EI? Well, the standard is five years, but can be shorter if, the, if it has been stated on that certificate and it needs to remain valid. Especially you need to be careful after the tenant vacates that the installation has not been tampered with, fiddled with, or the fire alarms and port appliances are in working order. So if I have a pre-existing EICR, do I need to get another one? Possibly as it is the intention of the legislation regulations that any certificate needs to meet the 18th edition. So will I be in trouble if I don't get it done? Enforcement can be taken by the local authority and in severe cases, a fine of up to £30,000 for breach could bring, up, bring to you. Secondly, where there are identified non-nogent work, they must serve a landlord a notice Within and given 28 days to perform that work. The landlord then must get that work done and inform the, the council. Finally, if the land if the authority is, is not satisfied that the breach has not been carried out, they could get this work carried out and charge you. HMOs are slightly different as they have a separate legislation and building regulations. But again, this could be the case if your HMO license. EICR was the 17th edition, you may need at some point to bring it up to the 18th, but further guidance has been sought on that. Now my company has three levels of service to assist you in this. A, bro, a gold, a silver and a bronze. You'll need to go and look on my website for more information. So in conclusion, please visit our website www.bartonelectrical.net or you can download our app onto your Android or Apple phone is an invaluable toolbox as it gives you further information on what your regulations are. Thank you for listening.